السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ان پریویس لیکچر وی اسٹڈیڈ سورسز آف اونڈ کیپٹل دیور ٹو شیئرس اینڈ ریٹینڈ ارننگس ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹڈی شیئرس ان ڈیٹیل دیٹ از اٹس ڈیفینیشن میننگ اینڈ فیچرس بفور اسٹارٹنگ ود اے ٹاپک لیٹس کلیئر دس ون ٹرم وٹ ڈو یو مین بائی شیئر کیپٹل First of all, what is capital? Money invested in the business is called as capital or I can say money that is raised by a company to do its business is known as capital, right? See here, the funds now, what is share capital? Capital, you all know, money raised by a firm to start a business but now The funds raised by company in exchange of its shares are known as share capital of a company. Now let's take an example. Suppose I want to start a company. For that, I need 2 lakh rupees. How much? I need 2 lakh rupees. I have got 20,000. And I'll ask 4 of my friends to invest the same 20,000 in my business. So that means 20, 20. when multiplied by 5 along with me will sum up with 1 lakh rupees and the other 1 lakh rupees i am going to have it in a form of borrowed capital so now i have divided this 2 lakh into 2 1 lakh is my own capital and the other 1 lakh is my borrowed capital this 1 lakh raised in the forms of share is known as share capital is it is this clear share capital the funds raised by the company in exchange of its shares are known as the share capital of a company now coming to the definition the term share is defined by section 284 of the companies act 2013 as share means a share in the share capital of a company and includes stocks let's divide it into two share means a share in the share capital of a company now see here in the above in the above picture you can see that see the example which is so right now is that 1 lakh rupees which i am going to you know raise through issue of share is known as share capital so now what is this share my part my 20000 is my share my four of the friends they have invested in my business with the same amount 20000 is their share each one of each one of them has got 20000 as their own shares so i can say that share means a share that is my portion in the share capital of a company and includes stock now you all must be thinking what is stock now let's see here Mr X has bought what is the stock we will see it here Mr X has bought the certificates of Reliance Limited now uh, let's assume that there is one person Mr X who has got a share of a Reliance company that means that one person is has invested only in Reliance Industries so in this case we will call the certificates as shares since we can see that mr x has bought certificates from a particular company that one company only mr x has got the shares of only one particular company okay so now that one particular company the amount which is invested i can call it as share now if we say that mr x owns certificates from several companies we would call them certificates of stock Now see here if Mr X has invested money in Reliance Industries in Tata Motors in uh, you know any other company you know Britannia Industries Limited Tata Motors Reliance Industries if this Mr X has invested money in three of the companies and has got three different share certificates all these three share certificates will be termed as stock certificates of stocks so now can i say that the stock a share is a smallest part of the stock can i say that if i divide this all three 
one, one, one. So this one is my share and all together these three are my stocks. That means we can say that share is a smaller unit of stock. Is that clear? Right? This is in simple. Again, we can see it in a simpler form. What is stock and what is share? Now see here, when and when the owner owns the share of several companies, we say that the owner owns stock. If I have invested in three of the companies, I would be said that I am an owner of stocks. That means I have got three share certificates. When the owner owns the shares of a particular company, we say that the owner owns shares. That is one particular company. Now here, Mr. A invests in stocks. This statement doesn't require any further questioning. If I say I'm going to invest my money in stocks, that means I'm going to invest my money in different companies, in several other companies. But Mr. B has invested in shares. If I say I'm going to invest my money in shares, so now the question arises, which company, how many shares, what type of shares, etc. Is that clear? Now see here, again it would be even simplified with this example, stock can be compared to the automobile industry. Okay, here I'm going to say you as an automobile industry, that means all the car companies will be included in automobile industries. Let's say, you know, you have got Toyota, you have got Ford, you have got Nissan, you have got Honda. So when I say, the, I am going to invest in automobile industry, in the stock of automobile industries, that means all these companies comes under. But when I say, share can be compared to a car. If I say I am going to invest in shares in any of the car companies, I'm going to purchase share of a car company. Then the question arises, which car company I'm talking about? Is it clear? Stock and shares. So yes, when I say I'm going to invest in mul multiple companies and I'm going to have multiple share certificates, those multiple share certificates are my stock. Okay. Now coming back to the definition, now it would be even clear. Share means a share in the share capital, one particular company, okay, and it includes stock as well, any other share certificates of different companies. Now, let's say this example, see, on the basis of this example, we are going to study the features of shares. Now, see here, I have taken three cases for you all to understand the different terminologies which will be used in the coming features and the coming chapter. Now see, let's see here, to start up a business, there is this lady, in case one we will say that, to start up a business, this XYZ lady requires 1 lakh rupees. Okay? What if this lady is going to ask this Miss Y, could you please invest 1 lakh in my business? Okay? Let's take an example here. Is it possible for a person to invest the whole amount? Is this possible, Miss Y? No, it's not possible. In the other case, this lady is going to ask two of them to invest in the business, okay, as 50, 50,000 each. Will Miss Y or Miss M is going to invest in the business? No, it's not possible to invest such a huge amount. Let's take a current situation. This you know, after the situation, this lockdown is going on, this, after this lockdown, what if I want to invest it in my business? Let's assume that if this lady is me and I want to invest in the, I want money from my friends or money from any other person, will they be in position to invest so much of amount into my business? No, not possible. This 1 lakh rupees we already saw in the example as share capital. Now in case 3, let's say if I ask all of them to give me 25,000 each, is it possible for all 4 of them, Ms. Y, Ms. M, Ms. P and Ms. P to invest in my business? No. Why? Because this is a huge amount. It's not possible for a person to invest this huge amount into the business. It's just an example. See, company is not built up in 1 lakh amount. It requires a huge amount. This is just a small example. Now, 
what this lady will get an idea what if i require i want to form a company as an abc and for that one this company i need 1 lakh rupees what if i try to collect smaller amount from many people that would be possible for them to invest right so here see if i ask each of them to invest 100 rupees in my business is it possible is it possible with this four to invest just a smaller amount that is 100 rupees of course that's possible so now see here in this equation i require 1 lakh rupees if i try to divide this 1 lakh by 100 rupees it comes to 1000 that means i need to contact 1000 people to give me this 1 lakh rupees to start my business is it possible for 1000 of people to invest just 100 rupees in my business yes that's possible so now what is my capital here 1 lakh is my capital my face value is 100 now see the amount person is going to invest in my business is the face value that is 100 rupees is the face value of shares now see when we are discussing about share capital here so now when i would be receiving 100 rupees i'm going to give in return shares of the company so yes the shares the value of those shares would be 100 and how many number of shares i require 1000 number of shares i require so that means those that 1000 number of shares would be given to the person and those person will become shareholders of the company right so now all these terms are clear to you who are the shareholders of the company shareholders are the persons who invest in the business of the company now see as we have seen in the example all of them are you know contributing equal amount into the business so can i say all of them are the owners of the company as they have contributed equal amount into the business right so now shareholders are the owners of the company we can say that so who are the shareholders what is the face value and what are shares see here in short it is said that share is a unit by which the share capital is divided second here is that the total capital of company is divided into small parts we have seen now total capital 1 lakh rupees divided into small parts 100 100 100 see the total capital of the company is divided into small parts and each part is called share and the value of each part is known as the face value share is a small unit of capital of a company we have seen earlier in the definition itself now it facilitates the public to subscribe to the capital in smaller amount we have seen in the example it was not possible for a person to invest 25000 but it's possible when divided into small parts when divided into 100 it's possible for general public to subscribe that is to take the shares of the company or to invest in the company it facilitates the public to subscribe to the capital in smaller amounts now a person can purchase any number of shares as he or she wishes now if you want to purchase five shares you have to pay 500 rupees and you can purchase five shares of the company as each share of a company is of rupees 100 as we have seen in the example now a person who purchases shares of a company is known as shareholder of a company or member of the company or i can say owner of the company is this clear now we are going to see what are the features of shares the very first one is the meaning as we have already seen in the definition share is the smallest unit in the total share capital of a company let's say here so you can see it in the diagram if this is the share capital all these square boxes are the share capital that one square is the smallest part of the share capital which is known as share of a company now see here if the total share capital you can see here the currency notes are there if this 2000 rupees i'm going to divide it into smaller parts let's say 
let's say 10 10 10 10 i'm going to issue n number of the number of shares i require in the smaller units is known as share capital of a company the total amount is share capital and the smallest unit is known as share of a company coming to the second one you have got ownership now let's take an example the same example we were seeing i'm going to invest into the company by you know giving some money and getting shares of the company so can i say now i'm going to be the owner of the company why because my money is invested in the company see the owner of share is called shareholder it shows the ownership of a shareholder in the company as i'm going to purchase the shares okay buying and selling purchasing see whenever you go and you purchase certain thing you become an owner of that thing why because you have paid the money and you have got certain thing right so you become the owner of the of that particular thing so here in the same it's the same in the case of shares when you buy shares or when you purchase shares you give money and you get the shares of the company so that means you become the owner of that shares and therefore you become the shareholder and you become the owner of the company so this thing you know this thing gives you ownership in that company the third point here you have got as distinctive numbers we'll take the same example distinctive numbers you know along with me there were four of my friends who invested in the business so now okay uh, you know when someone tries to invest in the business of course they will ask you for the certain evidence like what is the proof that i have given you money so in the case of shares when a person invest in the shares they get share certificate as an evidence so now each share certificate has got different numbers distinctive number means different numbers see each share has distinct numbers for identification it's very important for identification right share number 1 share number 2 3 4 like this way you have got distinctive numbers it is mentioned in the share certificate itself example let's say i have got shares i have got five shares in the company so now those five shares will have distinctive numbers let's say 1000 number then 1001 1002 1003 1004 and 1005 so i can say that i have got these five shares of the company now see here there is an example of reliance industries limited it's always mentioned on the share certificate as distinctive numbers so you can see the last two digits the starting digits are same and the last two digits are from 50 to 54 that means there are five shares this person this xyz person is holding five shares of reliance industries limited and the distinctive numbers the last two digits are from 50 to 54 okay distinctive numbers the fourth one as we already saw evidence of title what is the proof what is the evidence a share certificate is issued by a company under its common seal common seal we have already studied in standard 11th common seal what is common seal i can say it as signature of the company right can i say it as in signature of the company common seal the stamp of the company which is there on the share certificate now it is a document of title of ownership of the shares title of ownership of the shares that means if i have purchased a share of the company my name would be written along with the company's name company's stamp my name would be written on the share certificate so now it is a title of ownership it is a proof that i own certain shares of so and so company right now a share is not any visible thing it is shown by share certificate or in a form of demat shares now see here what are demat shares when shares are converted into electronic form it is known as demat shares as you know uh, there is always upgradation in everything so now shares are also there in e form electronic form so those forms which are there in electronic forms are known as demat shares so now see here 
when a company if i say i own shares of the company so now is this the asset is it my asset i have purchased i have paid money and i have got the asset is share my asset of course my asset why because i can sell and i can get the money so now when company it issues shares it's a proof that you know company is giving me the evidence company is giving me the proof that i am the owner of the shares so now this is the property and it's not any visible thing if i say that you know i have got land and building as my asset i can show this is my land and building so now what is the visible thing here if it's in a physical form well and good i can show this is my share certificate this is in physical form but if it is in dematerialized form it is not any visible thing evidence of title is a clear evidence of title company's name company's common seal along with the title of ownership of shares that means my name would also be there on the share certificate now you can see here in this example green bay packers this company has issued shares see here this certifies that see the name of the owner is written here along with that there is a common seal can you see here see this is a common seal green bay packers corporate seal so now this is a proof this is an evidence that this share belongs to this company and this share belongs to so and so person now the fifth one here is value of share what is the value of share here you have to see it see each share has a value expressed in terms of money now what is face value as we have seen in the starting that rupees 100 was the face value see this value is written on the share certificate and mentioned in the memorandum of association memorandum of association most important document of the company Se second clause capital clause in that capital clause you know it would be mentioned that 100 i would say that you know 1000 equity shares of rupees 100 each you know in in your balance sheet you must have seen 1000 equity shares of rupees 100 each that 1000 is the number of shares this 100 each this 100 is the face value of the shares now you can see here this one example of the share certificate of a corporation it's mentioned here see this is to certify that isabel lekis of a root adel you know the address is given here as 1050 belgium is registered holder of 25000 shares of united states dollars see here the value is mentioned in dollar as one each you have to pay attention to this one each numbered 1 to 25000 this distinctive numbers as share is of 1 dollar so now if this person has purchased 25000 shares so the distinctive number is 1 to 25000 this is the face value the value which has been you know which is written on the share certificate is the face value of the shares now second is issue price what do you mean by issue price it is the price at which company sell its shares suppose in the you know the example we took was the you know 100 is the face value but what if the face value is 10 you know the smaller amount any amount now once see the face value is always lesser it can be from 1 to 10 or you know from 1 to 100 but what if the company's face value is 10 but company wants to sell the share issue the share in the market at rupees 100 company can do that so when the company though the price of the share is 10 but the company is trying to issue the same share at rupees 100 that is known as issue price that means the selling price of the share is 100 see the issue price of shares is a price at which they are offered for sale when they first become available to the public the third one you have got as market value this value of share is determined by demand and supply forces in the market now let's say the company is started the company is growing the company is working very well after 5 years the value may increase you know the value may increase or the value may decrease 
So this value of shares is determined by demand and supply forces in the share market. Let's say I purchased the shares from the company in rupees 100. But now after two years, there is an increment of the value. The value increased as the company is working very good. So now the value must, uh, you know, has come up to 200 or to 250 per share. So yes, market value is something which is de determined by the demand and supply forces in the share market. Now you have got rights. A share confers certain rights on its holders such as rights to receive dividend, rights to inspect statutory books, rights to attend shareholders meeting, rights to vote at such meeting. Now see here, what do you mean by rights? A share confers certain rights on its holders such as right to receive dividend. Now once you have invested, once you have invested your amount into the company, you will going you, you know you are going to receive certain things as an return on that amount. So that return is termed as dividend. As we have seen, you know, when you invest in the bank as fixed deposit, what return banks give you? Interest. So once you invest in the shares of the company, the return you get is as dividend. Right to receive dividend. You have got certain rights when you invest money. The second right you have got is right to inspect statutory books. What are these statutory books? Statutory books are those books which a company is supposed to maintain compulsorily. A company's statutory books are usually kept at registered office. Do you remember registered office of the company? Statutory books, official records of the company. So now, once you have become the owner of the company, can you inspect those books? Can you go and see those books? Of course you can see. This is your right to inspect the statutory books. Then you have got right to attend shareholders meeting. Of course, you have invested your money in the business in the form of shares. So you have got the right to attend the meetings. Whenever there is a company meeting regarding the important decisions, let's say one, you know, when a company wants to diversify, okay, to expand the business. So those important decisions would be taken in the shareholders meeting where all the owners of the company will be present. See, why am I using these two words? Just to make you aware why you have got the right. Because you are the owner of the company, you are the shareholder of a company, so you have got the right to take important decisions. Okay? And here the fourth one is a right to vote at such meetings. Once you are the owner of the company, once you have got the right to be there in the meeting, you have got the right to vote, of course. If you, you know, if you want to take certain decision, you want to put forth, you know, you want to keep in front your views and, you know, along with you, there are four to five, you have got the right to vote for the same decision. If you agree with the decision, you have got the right to vote for that decision, either in yes or no. So these are the four rights which a shareholder gets after purchasing the shares of the company. Seventh one you have got is an income. Of course, the, when there is an investment, there is an income. A shareholder is entitled to get a share in the net profit of the company. When company is making profit, of course, you are going to get something in return. It is called as dividend. Now, see, net income is divided here into two, retained earnings and dividends. You know, we have seen retained earnings and again, we are going to see further. But as of now, you are supposed to concentrate on dividend. What if a company has made a profit of rupees or, you know, 20,000? So now see, there are two bifurcations. 15,000 as in retained earnings. That means the company is not going to distribute this 15,000. The company is going to reinvest it in the business, 15,000. Now, the remaining 5,000, the company is going to distribute it to the shareholders, to the owners of the company, to the investors of the company. Okay? So, here, you have to remember what is an income. If I'm talking, you know, shares, the income is one feature and that income is known as dividend. The eighth point you have got is as transferability. You know, what is transferability? To transfer means to hand over 
to sell or to pass on. See, we have said that share is an asset of a company. So now, can I sell the asset of a can I sell the asset if I am a shareholder of a company? Share is my asset. Can I sell my asset? Yes, of course, that's possible. The shares of public limited company. It's very important. The shares of public limited company are freely transferable, or I can say freely sellable in the manner provided in the Articles of Association. Whatever Articles of Association, second important document of the company, internal rules and internal management of the company, Articles of Association. So now, how, in whatever manner, in whatever procedure, the Articles of Association allows a person to transfer the share, to sell the share, a person can do the same. Okay? Now see here, you can see it in the image. What if I want to sell my shares? I'll hand over the share certificate to the other person and I'll get the amount. I'll get the money in return. I want to sell the shares. I will give the share certificate and I will get the money. This is known as, this is the most important feature, transferability, freely transferable, that is freely sellable. Now the ninth one you have got as property of shareholder. Share is a movable property of shareholder. Can I take my share certificate wherever I go? Is it possible? Yes, it's possible because it's my movable property. Can I take my land and building and go wherever I want to? Is it possible to take my building somewhere else? No, it's not possible. So I can say share is a movable property of a shareholder. You have to keep this in mind. See here in the picture you can say shareholders holding their shares. Can I take my share and, and can I shift to any other state or any other country? Is it possible? Yes, it's possible. It's my movable property. And with, the, with this 10 point we are coming to the end. Kinds of shares. Again, a very important feature. A company can issue two kinds of shares. Equity shares and preference shares. Equity shares and preference shares we are going to study in detail, in a lot of detail in coming lectures. With this, we come to an end of today's lecture. Again, here is a short assignment. And, you know, just one question. Hope you all will do it. That's all for today. Thank you.